a spaceship. So he's got spaceship parts on spaceship. this. Spaceship! Yeah. And the beer holder. And the beer holder. <laughs> Yo, what's up everybody? It's your dude Black Cat here. I'm out at King of the Hammers 2023 and I'm here with Aaron. Aaron has a really unique, awesome, old school Bronco that we want to show you guys. I came over here, the BFG garage is where we're at. Aaron's working in the BFG garage with the Barnes four wheel drive guys, right? They do such an awesome thing here. Every year if you break, they will fix your stuff for tips. Free of charge. Free of charge. Gratuity accepted. Gratuity accepted. Um, all you gotta do is provide the parts. If you have the parts, they do have some stuff here, right? We do, we do. We don't really carry raw materials or uh, hard parts, but we will put them on and we will weld that it up for you. Yes. They'll weld up your stuff. I've actually pulled the Forerunner in here a few years ago. I had a cracked uh, lower control arm mount and they welded up for me and I, I tipped them some money and I was on my merry way. Happy camper. Such a cool thing what these guys do here every year for all the people. You guys even have tires for sale? We do. We yeah. sell um, DOT tires and we do have race tires for sale here at the tent at King of the Hammer. Excellent. Anyway, so that's that's what they do here all week long, the whole 14 days of King of the Hammers, which is so cool. So I came here the other day looking for some tires. They didn't have KO2s, which is okay. <laughs> And then Aaron said, hey, you need to come look at this thing. And I took a quick glance over it. I didn't want to do too much because I want to save it for this episode. So what's the deal with this thing? This is my very first car. Got this car when I uh, pulled a quid pro quo with the parents for passing math and science class. Totally bombing. They said, if you get a good grade, we'll give you the pink slip. That was eighth grade, right around 1988, somewhere in there. So it's been in my family since I was four. And uh, when I got it, it was a basket case. Totally empty, no motor, no doors, totally stripped. It took me four years. I drove the sucker from California to Colorado to start a new life. How long has it taken you to, to build this thing? Well, I've, I've done the build in different chunks over the years. I started with the uh, fiberglass from uh, designing it, molding it in clay, doing all the composites, all right getting her dialed. And then I had to build the suspension to fill out the fenders. So that was kind of the first chunk. That was mid-90s. But mid-2000s, I did the seat mounts, which is the roll cage. And then during COVID, we did the rear end. So you've been building this thing since the, the 90s. 1988. 1988, the build process started. Started in 88. And here she is, alive and well. Still here. You've been out here mobbing it on your, oh, on your time, yeah. off time. Oh, yeah. Right on, man. That's sick. OK, well, let's just get right into it. Let's start with the front. For sure. We'll see what you got. Yeah. All right. OK, there she is. So up here, we got uh, small block Ford, your okay. typical 289 block. Uh, 302 crank, a little bit of heads. We're at 306 for cubic inches. Four barrel carbureted still. Outboard headers. Got a little mild cam in it. And then aside from just, uh, you know, chrome, it's, it's a bone stock, five liter Ford Mustang type motor. What did the motor come out of originally? Out of this thing. It was in here yeah. originally. Okay, all cool. All I had was the block. So everything there, the, the crank, rods, uh, all the motor mouth, pan, all that stuff, I had to source. And uh, yeah, I got her slipped together and it runs, actually. Heck yeah, dude. <laughs> Take a look at this guy. So old school three, uh, 289. It's got a little bit of motor work done to it. 
And then let's talk about the suspension, man. So we got uh, a king coil over in here. Yep, yep. And then a TTB front axle. Yeah, typically these come with a, uh, a Dana 30 uh, straight axle from the 70s. Okay. You know, classic Bronco ran from 1966 to 1977. And uh, through all those, they all had straight axles, whether it had been a Dana 30 or a Dana 44. So we axed that out of there all together. Ranger Explorer package runs an aluminum Dana 35 center section, uh -huh. super lightweight, easy to, to, to put on a beam and, and have it feel like it's not there. So we did uh, aluminum center section Dana 35. Okay. The outers are Dana 44 uh, out of your typical F-150 Bronco. Still has a uh, you know stock Y type steering setup. Okay. Uh, you know no need for. Uh, there's not enough room for a swing set under there, essentially. Right, right. Locking hubs by Warren, the big brass bastards, you know, okay. they work the best. Okay, right on. Yep, yep. And then how much wheel travel are you pulling in the front here? Up front, we're strapped in right now at 14 inches of travel. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we open it up, and uh, if I got in there and hogged out some joints and stuff, we probably could get 16, but it's ridiculous. 14 yeah. is yeah. just fine. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, uh, especially with four-wheel drive. 14 inches of wheel travel is a good mount, and if you you got the shocks dialed in, which they've probably been in there long enough to where you got them pretty dialed. Oh, I got it figured out. Yeah, yep. you got it figured out. You know, 14 inches of wheel travel is plenty. You got the whole front end here is still old school, all, all metal. All sheet metal, yeah. Yep. All sheet metal. You still got halogen lights. Yep. You're off road, some off road Pia's here. Yep. So you were saying this glass. This is all my glass work. Okay. Designed and built in the 1990s. It was my first business as a teenager. It was known as Bentline Fabworks. I still sell them today, but not very many. Made about eight sets, and I'm the one that's burned through six of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> right on. So you, so you made a mold and finished them out of clay. Made the mold, made the plug. And Correct. So you, so you own all that stuff still. Correct. Yeah. Right still on. have all that stuff. I have the molds for the hood um, and the fenders, and I'm currently going to be working on doing the rear tooling so that I can offer a whole body kit for this style Bronco. A little word to you guys, if you have an old school uh, 70s Bronco, 60s, 70s Bronco, and you like this glass from this episode, make sure to hit up Aaron. We'll put um, a link to his Instagram and all that kind of stuff, and you guys can hit him up and you, maybe you can have this glass for yourself. So how about the rear? Right here, what? Okay, hold on a second. What is this thing here? Oh, that's uh, that's uh, that keeps the sun off your head. <laughs> it's modeled after Big Ole. You know, Big Ole is the yeah. most infamous off-road Bronco out there. And Pernelli Jones said, "Let's put a wing on it because they weren't going to run a roof, but they put a wing on it because they needed a roof." So I put a wing on mine because why not? It does work. It's got two roofs because we are legal and in, in many sanctions to race this thing. So we have a. a 16 gauge sheet metal roof. Okay. Keeps this legal race. And then the aluminum roof uh, is just there for looks and downforce. Okay. It actually produces downforce. Oh, right on. All of the air that hits the windshield goes under the wing. Oh, interesting. What happens is it gets squeezed. So at 50 miles an hour, the air coming out of the back of this wing is 120 miles an hour. You're providing some sort of uh, atmospheric weight on top of the cab. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, cool. uh, and the aft part of the wing is on a linear actuator, and we get about 30 degrees of movement, and it actually really works. About 50 miles an hour, we get about 300 to 500 pounds of downforce. That's crazy. Yeah. Dude. Let me reach in here and hit the button for you. All right. Let's see this thing in action. Look at that. Look at it go. So cool. While you're driving, you don't have time to look in the back, so we put a gauge on the A-pillar. Oh, so, that, so you have a gauge on the A-pillar that tells gauge you what degrees it's at? It's the only gauge that works. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. New school technology put into a really old school ride that like actually works and provides some sort of downforce for when he's out in the desert cruising. That is freaking awesome. Hell yeah, dude. I love it. Yeah, hydraulic ram in there. Moving that wing up and down. Electronic linear actuator. Okay. Electronic actually off of a um, um, what do they call an experimental aircraft. Okay. Basically, aircraft that gets built in your garage at home. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what it's yeah. off of. So uh, a spaceship. So he's got spaceship parts on spaceship. there. Spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, a UFO has landed in America. Since we're back here, let's look at these rear fenders. How far over a side are they? We're about eight inches per side. Okay, so eight inches per side. Eight inches per side. And if you look real close, you can see the cracks in the Bondo. 
There's the original body. There's our gap, and then there's the external oh, body. Oh, got you, yeah. man. This is such a cool, interesting build, and you've kept it like period correct with the wheels. These like old school Mickey Thompson or Prager yep, yep. wheels or something. Yeah, whatever brand that has the round holes, man, yeah. I'll run it. Yeah, for sure. 1,500 miles on these KR2s. Okay, right on. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to, I can't do you just burn them up. Well, let's move on to the rear suspension. So, oh, you still got the tailgate too on here. That's rad. Tailgate and the beer holder. And the beer holder. Oh, right on. <laughs> Sick, you got a little table. Um, Ford actually produced this license plate bracket for the Broncos so that the farm ranchers, when they got out on the highway and they were hauling plywood, the cops wouldn't bother them. Oh, heck yeah, interesting. So that's how that works. Yeah, so yeah. That's, that's that's an original factory part. OEM piece. That's awesome. Yeah, heck yeah. Tailgate is OEM to the Bronco. Okay, right, well, let's talk about this rear end because I see some shocks coming out the back. It's a little bit different than your normal setup. They're pointed a little funny, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So back here we have a full width 1979 Big Berry 9 inch rear end. Okay. Running 370 gears with the spool, standard drum brakes. Can't get too fancy with this thing. We're old school, gotta keep the old school vibe. Got it, got it. But I did do a mezzanine style rear suspension on this. Okay. That gathers up about 24 inches of travel. We're running a 14 inch piggyback reservoir king. Uh, followed up by a 12 inch, two and a half inch coilover dual rate. Let's take a look at this thing. So I see uh, you kept a sway bar too, which is nice. Added sway bar, yep, inch and a quarter. It's about the biggest one you can get from the speedway. The mezzanine arm back here. Let's see if I can get in here. Yeah, you can get in there. You just kind of see the mezzanine arm going that way. Excellent. So with your hands, can you kind of maybe explain to us how the mezzanine system works as opposed to like a traditional uh, link system or like, you know, whatever, uh, yeah, what's, cantilever. Yeah, what's really cool about the mezzanine system is the truck and the chassis carry the load and the weight of the shock absorber, excuse me, damper, and your coilover. Okay. So basically your axle has zero unsprung weight. Huh. Aside from its axle itself. A small push rod carried on a lever arm. Okay. And uh, it's about a 2.2 to 1 ratio. So with a 14 inch travel uh, shock absorber, we can get about 20 to 24 inches of travel total at the axle. I'm guessing you guys probably did this wave to help keep it compact and to fit in the back here as well, right? Um, yeah, it was originally for like passenger compartment area. Okay. Uh, but my kids turned 18 before they even wanted to ride with me. Okay. So <laughs> we just bobbed the tub and kept with the mezzanine uh, because of the, the pressure load on the chassis. The way the suspension works in a mezzanine is it loads the chassis at the back, but wants to pull the front end up. Every time the rear axle comes up, it actually loads the front and negatively. Okay. So it makes the front light. Oh, interesting. Uh, when you're in the whoops, it makes the truck feel like it's 20 inches longer than it actually is. Yeah, interesting. so it actually gives it a different feel when you're driving. Yeah. So that's a little lesson for all you shorter wheelbase guys, because the, what's the wheelbase on this thing? Can 99. You, yeah, it's barely 100 inches. Yep. It's, this is a, definitely a good option yeah. for you guys to go with when you have a shorter wheelbase, if it, especially if it makes it feel like it's a longer well, wheelbase. Yeah. Especially in the big whoops. Yeah. Um, the only time it doesn't feel long is when you're on the brakes or when you're in the turns, which okay. is all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Ford wheel with the spare. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So you yeah. can't go wrong with that strap here. Yeah. Yeah. This what is are these? Uh, a Simpson seatbelt. Oh, it's a Simpson seatbelt. So you modified it to. It's what I had laying around, man. Okay, right on. Perfect. Around, yeah. Perfect. He had it laying around. See, that's ingenuity, folks. You don't folks. need new stuff, guys. Yeah. Take what you got yeah. and make it work. You're goddamn right. This thing, I'm sure, is the epitome of take what you got and make it work, yes. and it's so awesome. You'll see a battery box back here. Yep, external battery. Keeps okay. all that stinky stuff out. Fuel cell. 16-gallon jazz fuel cell. 16-gallon, okay. Got it right off of Amazon. Don't need nothing special, guys. Just yeah. need to get out there in the dirt. So let's check out the interior of this thing. All right, so uh, Eric, tell us about this interior, man. It looks uh, pretty old school. No frills, man. No frills. No frills. We got the original uh, gauge cluster up there that has the speedometer. Uh, the OEM heater's still in here. Of course, hook the ducks, so you can put those right up your shorts. Nice. Okay, right on, perfect. We do live in Colorado. It gets a little chilly out there. Okay, yeah. We got the Winner Sidewinder Shifter. Okay. Winners are great guys, man. 
You guys get yourself a shifter, you get yourself a sidewinder, man. They'll support you, no problem. Is this a, is this a handbrake? That is the emergency brake. Emergency yes. brake, okay. It is actually a foot pedal, emergency brake, modified. We can uh, we can put it in neutral position and use it as oh, a Oh, excellent, yeah. heck yeah, I yeah. love it, man. Yeah, for when you want to back it in and just send it out. Old school looking wheel, so um, how old is this wheel, you think? That wheel right there is five years old. You have some sort of uh, button system up here. Here's this gauge for the, the rudder angle that you guys see it working there. So we got all your essential buttons and stuff up here. Relay setup, and it's got a siren, uh, your typical air horn, um, and it has eight other slots in there for uh, whatever lights you want to run at about 20 amps. Got the Corbu seats, G-Force racing harnesses. Uh, got some headsets back here. These look like some pretty old school style headsets. Old school. We had yeah. to keep with the theme with the old school. So we got actual flight style soft command intercoms. Old school two wire stuff. Can't go wrong with that. Now the question is how good does it work? When you put new batteries in it, it works great. It works great. <laughs> our plan is to race Nora. That okay. is going to be, that's one of our bucket list deals. I spent the last two years racing SCCA Rallycross. Um, Chuck Brazer's Hoopty Cross. And I did some hill climb out there in Colorado. Okay, just right to kind of test the chassis and get things dialed in. But, uh, it's hard to get out of Colorado to come to the desert, so yeah, here yeah. I am now, and we're yeah. beating on it good. Oh, right on, man. Yeah. You got a pretty good little desert cage going on in here. Yep, we're all legal and quite a few sanctions. Um, it is a little bit heavy, so the inch and three quarter for score, they don't really like it. Yeah. Plus, we'll go to uh, fiberglass, we'll lose a couple hundred pounds, and we'll be right in there. Well, sweet, dude. Oh, here's a horn button for you guys. That's cool. Okay. Okay. And you got one up here too? Yeah. Is this a different top, one? Top one. There's one other thing I wanted to point out too that I thought was really cool are these are these dust lights. So what's the what's the story about these dust lights? These dust lights right here are, are your uh, 1970s melon lights off the uh, big rigs. You know, okay. like Smokey and the Bandit yeah. and whatnot. So I think we kind of covered just about everything. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kick well, ass. Aaron, thank you so much, man, for no showing problem. us your Thanks ride. Thanks, my dad. Yeah, for sure. Anytime, dude. Let's go out and beat. Aaron, we appreciate you so much. We appreciate what you guys do over here at the BFG uh, garage during the King of the Hammers and help out so many people. You guys get a lot of people coming through here every day. Yeah, we're at about 60 to 70 cars a day. Oh, dang. So these yeah. guys are out here working hard. If you guys love what you see, make sure to hit up Aaron on his Instagram. Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, got them all. With that, uh, thank you guys guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Get out in the garage and do it. Yeah, for sure what he said. <laughs> <laughs>